In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up an AI notification system. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing a simple script. We're going to be able to use OpenAI, Grok, or Olama. In the example I'm going to be showing you, we're going to scrape Hacker News. Then we're going to process the results that we take from the page. We're going to determine, are these results relevant to the type of news that we're interested in? If they are, we're going to send ourselves a text message. If it is relevant news, we're going to be doing that all through Twilio. Super simple to set up. Otherwise, we're just going to log out that there are no updates. Then we're just going to go through the interval again. We're going to be able to use Olama, Grok, OpenAI. So just to give you an idea, you can run this all locally on your machine if you'd like, with the exception of the Twilio update. Now, this text message piece from Twilio, you could swap this out for just a notification on your system or an email through a provider like Amazon SES or Resend or something like that. By the end of the video, you'll have a good template on how to get started with all of this. So in terms of the coding portion, we're going to be using TypeScript as well as Bun. In terms of frameworks, we're not going to be using any in this example, but I'll just go ahead and show you what this looks like. If I bun index.ts, what that's going to do is it's going to initiate the first run of the application. Then you can see it quickly goes through. What it's doing behind the scenes is it's using Puppeteer to scrape Hacker News. It's getting an array of all of the different results, and then it's showing me the title as well as the link, as well as the points. I have it set up in a way for it to detect whether there are any relevant stories to AI or development, and then it's going to return those back to me. And this is going to be what is sent through Twilio as a text message. In this example, I was leveraging Grok, but I'm going to show you how you can do this with Olama or OpenAI as well. Once we get that response back, you will see that the application is still running because we're setting up where this will just run in the background if you have it open on your computer, where it's going to go and trigger that every, in this case, three hours. But you can change that out to be whatever you want, or you can have this just be a one-time invocation as well. In terms of the source code here, you'll be able to get it within the description of the video. We're going to get a few different API keys. You're going to get some free credits from Twilio if you want to try them out. So you can go to console.twilio.com. Make an account, you'll be able to grab the S number, the auth token, as well as the Twilio phone number. And you can just plug them in here one by one. I'm going to put a .env .example. You can just remove the .example and use that within the application. Then from there, you can put in the phone number that you want to have this message sent to. And then finally, you can set up an API key for Grok, which it is currently free at time of recording to use the or you can use the OpenAI API as well. Now, if you are using Olama, you don't need an API key because you're gonna be running that locally. The first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're going to import the dependencies that we just installed. So OpenAI, Puppeteer, Twilio, and .env to access those environment variables that we just set up. Once we have that, we're gonna load up our environment variables. Once we have that set up, we're gonna configure all of the different interfaces that we're gonna be using within our application. Next, we're gonna be setting up a configuration object. Within the configuration object, what we're gonna do is we're gonna define all of the different providers. This is gonna be how you can swap out the different models that you're gonna be using. You can swap them out here, as well as where you see Grok or Olama as well. Once we have that, this is going to be where we determine what provider that we want to use for the current interval. So it's set up in a way where if you want to swap out from Grok to Olama, you can simply do so by just swapping out this string here. Next, we're just going to be bringing in all of the information for Twilio. And then finally, we're going to be setting up the phone number that we're going to be passing in within our application. So once we have that set up, we're going to be initializing OpenAI. And this is going to be where we first do that lookup of the config of the particular provider that we have set within that configuration object above. Once that's set up, we're going to be passing that into the OpenAI SDK. And the thing to know with this isn't to be confused with OpenAI itself. This is just to leverage the OpenAI SDK. And the reason that we do this is it makes it easy to swap out from one different provider to another while conforming to the same consistent OpenAI schema that we get as a response back, as well as how we actually invoke and send a request to the endpoint. We're going to call that function to actually initialize OpenAI. Once we have that set up, we're going to set up our Twilio service. This is going to be where we pass in our API key. And ultimately, this is all that we need to actually send that SMS message. We're going to say where that message is from and then where that message is going. And then finally, we're just going to return out that the message has been sent. Then a similar thing here for Twilio, just like we had for OpenAI, we're going to actually initialize. Next, this is going to be the function that we use to scrape the Hacker News website. Now, if you follow the same sort of pattern, ultimately, you're going to be able to scrape other websites as well. So you don't necessarily need to use the Hacker News website if you want to swap in a different URL. There's going to be a few different things that you can tweak. 
The first thing that we're gonna do within this function is we're gonna launch Puppeteer. This is gonna be what we use to create a synthetic browser. What Puppeteer allows you to do is it's a common tool for scraping different websites. And the difference with Puppeteer is you can set up Puppeteer in a way where it will load all of the different JavaScript of the page before you actually go and parse the website. You can also do a ton of other things like actually interact with the website and use it for different automations if you'd like. So you wanna fill out forms or go through a login process. You can do that all within Pu Puppeteer as well. Now, if you actually wanna see what the browser is doing, you can set headless to false and that will actually show the Chrome instance on your screen when it goes through the different steps if you'd like. From there, we're gonna open up a new page. Then we're going to go to the website and then what we're gonna do is evaluate the page based on the different selectors that are on the page. This is gonna be unique to the particular site that you're using. In this case, we're gonna get an array of all of the different stories, and then we're going to extract the details that we want. So we're gonna be getting the title element as well as the score element. And then finally, we're gonna be getting the href attribute. And this is gonna be the payload that we ultimately send to the LLM. Once we have that, we're gonna return these stories out of our function. And then finally, we're going to close out the browser. Otherwise, if there are any errors, we're just gonna return an empty array, and then we're gonna return an error within our application. Next, this is largely gonna be the portion of our application where we're leveraging an LLM. Here, we're gonna be calling that function that we had just talked about. And then from there, we're gonna be setting up a prompt. Within the prompt, we're gonna be passing in the results that we get back from Hacker News. And then we're gonna say scan for these stories specifically related to AI, machine learning, software engineering, et cetera. Within here, we have the prompt. We're passing in all of the results that we got from Hacker News. And then we're gonna ask it to scan all of those results for stories related to AI, machine learning, or software engineering. Then we're gonna say, create a friendly message. Then what we're gonna be asking to include in our text message essentially is the title, a clickable link, the score, as well as a brief description. So in this case, I wanted to have it be almost like a friend texting you. We're gonna say, keep the tone casual as if you're texting a friend. And then if there are no relevant results to AI or software engineering, just respond back exactly with no AI or dev updates right now. From there, we're gonna console log what it's doing. And then this is gonna be our chat completion. This is gonna be where we invoke the LLM. We're gonna be passing it in within the prompt. And then we're gonna be using the model as well as the provider that we had declared earlier. And from there, if the message is longer than 50 characters, we do have a message and the message doesn't equal no AI or dev updates right now, we're going to send that text message. And then finally, we're just going to have a catch if we have any errors. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and initialize our application. And that's pretty much it. You can go ahead and run your application. Again, bun index.ts. And then there we have it. You'll get a text message as soon as that's done. That's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.